Hello everybody, welcome back to the Bad Puzzlecast podcast. My name is Jack and we've just had Smackdown Live and the end of the Superstar Shake-Up and may I say, Smackdown Live, what an absolute shit show it was. Um, in my opinion, it was rubbish, absolutely terrible. The Superstar Shake-Ups were alright, the moves to Smackdown were alright. The show itself was so boring at times, like... I honestly felt like switching off two or three times. Um, it didn't help that the crowds were not into it at all. I didn't. The only chant I heard was one when one Raw superstar came out, and that was it. But let's get into the drafts. Sorry. Now I might have missed them. I can't remember all of them. <laughs> I have tried to write them down, but at one point of the night, I forgot to start writing things down. But I think I've got all of them. We started off the first, um, well, the first thing that happened on SmackDown was AJ Styles came out, uh, cut a promo on Nakamura, and then Rue Seven Aiden English came out. They're back to being heels. Don't know why they were cutting face promos for ages. Now they're heels again. Brilliant. Um, Rue Seven AJ started to have a match. It literally ended 30 seconds later when Aiden English came in and broke up a calf crusher. Then Daniel Bryan came out for some reason. And uh, then it cut away. Such a weird crap start to the show. Unbelievable. Uh, And then what happened next? There was a thing with Paige and Teddy Long. Uh... They announced that the main event would be Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles versus Rusev and Aiden English. So fair enough. And then Shelton Benjamin came out to absolutely zero fanfare. The crowd did not care. So it's a bit of a shame for him. He did a promo about not needing uh, Chad Gable. And then he said, I need some competition. So Randy Orton came out. And then Jeff Hardy came out. So I called it. I said Jeff Hardy were going to go and not Seth Rollins. But then Randy Orton went to the back again. So there was literally no point in Randy Orton coming out. I don't understand why he came out. And we didn't see him for the rest of the show. <sighs> Just weird. Um, and then Jeff Hardy and Shelton Benjamin had a match. And Jeff won. That was an alright match. It's Jeff Hardy and Shelton Benjamin, isn't it? They're both old school vets of the game, if you will. Uh, Miz then cut a promo, but he wasn't on SmackDown. He was in... Los Angeles, I think, or someone like that. And then Sin Cara, there was an ad break, and then when we came back, Sin Cara was on the screen. Um, and his opponent was Samoa Joe. So we now got Samoa Joe on SmackDown, which this is one of the saving graces of SmackDown, if I'm honest. We now have the opportunity of Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles, Samoa Joe versus Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe versus Nakamura. Samoa Joe versus one other person um, who came later on in the night. Samoa Joe on SmackDown makes quite a lot of sense. There's quite a lot of dream matches. That seems to be the term coined nowadays. We've obviously seen them before on the Independents. And we've obviously seen AJ versus Samoa Joe on TNA before. But we've never seen it on WWE. So hopefully they do that at some point. We then had the call-up that I called Sanity, and now on the main roster, minus Nikki Cross for some reason. I don't know if she's injured. I don't know if they just outright said, we'll um, bring up these three, but you're not invited. So yeah, Sanity are up, just not with Nikki Cross. (laughs) No idea why. Like Most of the things on SmackDown, I have left questioning why. Um, then Big Cass turned up, uh, he's now on Smackdown, obviously he's been injured for a year, the fans did not care one bit, <laughs> he cut off Daniel Bryan during an interview, <sighs> yeah, and then straight after Big Cass we had, uh, Carmella come out, and they had the Melibration, whatever they're calling it, and she cut about a five minute promo, and then Charlotte came out, and then the Iconic Duo came out, and then Becky Lynch came out, because Iconic Duo and 
Charlotte started to fight. So Becky Lynch came out to help Charlotte. And then Charlotte beat Billy Kay, one half of the iconic duo, drew to figure four, just figure eight even. Um, so that was just random. <laughs> um, yeah. And then after the match, obviously everyone gangs in, Carmella jumped Charlotte, and then Asuka uh, came out. So Asuka's now on SmackDown, which is fair enough. I wouldn't... <laughs> I didn't know whether they were going to put Charlotte and Asuka on the same brand after WrestleMania, but they've gone with it. Fair play. Uh, Sh Asuka was the only singles female star to move. Absolution moved uh, through, you know, the dropper. They got they got an announcement on TV that they were moving, at least. Um, but yeah, Absolution are also on SmackDown Live, as well as now Asuka. Um, next up was the club got announced on SmackDown without Finn Balor. Finn Balor's staying on Raw, so the club are just flicking, flickering between Finn and AJ at the moment. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then the bar got moved to SmackDown, so that would be interesting. SmackDown have got quite a few good tag teams now, and... Raw haven't got that many. Um, they got AOP, The Revival. Yeah. <laughs> AOP and The Revival, anyone? Um, you obviously got other tag teams like Breezango and The Ascension, but they're not exactly getting booked that well at the moment, are they? Uh, we then had our truth moving to SmackDown. The least said about him, the better. And then we had... I don't, I, I feel like I missed something because this is around this time where I forgot to write things down. We then had the big main event, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan versus Rusev and Aiden English. And it only took me through, halfway through this match, that the only reason why they paired Rusev and Daniel Bryan up was so the yes chance were bigger than the Rusev day chance. It was so obvious when I thought about it. I was like, this is so stupid from WWE. So, and they're heavily advertising this Taker match as well between Rusev. Which I'm not liking. So, this is, I feel this is all pushing towards Rusev leaving. Which is a shame because he won't be able to use Rusev or Rusev Day on the Indies. If he goes to the Indies, of course. Which, it's a shame. But, what can he do? WWE clearly don't like him. Or it could all just be a work, and he's going on the biggest push ever. <laughs> um, but at the end of the match, well, end of the match, it was a no contest again. It was a it was a DQ. Um, so the second week in a row, Nakamura has come out and attacked AJ Styles with his trusted low blow. And then Big Big Cass attacks Daniel Bryan. Like, <laughs> okay, um, but that was SmackDown Live. Um, if you want any good Tuesday night wrestling action, watch 205 Live, I say, because the, there was a match on there between the Lucha House Party and Tozawa and Atami, and that was absolutely amazing, that match. They they gave him a good 25 half hour, and it was good. It was good. The crowds were actually getting into that match as well, whereas the crowd were not into SmackDown at all. The only time I heard chants from the crowd at SmackDown was when Tamara came out. Um, there was another mention. Of, this is one of the things I forgot to write on my notes, but I've written it down on here. Um, Andrade Cien Almes is now on SmackDown. Like, good. I didn't think they were going to move him up, but they have. And I'm just waiting to see who they're bringing up to NXT. Because NXT don't have that very... they got... Now that a big demo, Killian Dane's on the main roster with Sanity, you've got Alistair Black, he's obviously champion. The Undisputed Era lads, Pete Dunne, um, EC3, Lars Sullivan, Velveteen Dream, Ricochet. I can't think of any others. 
they got two belt, two singles belts now, and I literally can't think of that many singles NXT competitors. So they're going to have to bring at least one or two up from nowhere. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you want some entertaining stuff from Tuesday night, watch 205 Live. I wouldn't bother watching SmackDown. It was it was fairly boring, in my opinion. But if you like that, obviously we are recording the podcast tonight as I record this. Um, leave us questions down below. Leave us questions on the Twitter, at SpadFocusWP. All that stuff will be in the comments like I did yesterday. And yeah, hopefully next week's Smackdown will be slightly better. We haven't, We still haven't got any more matches for the Greatest Royal Rumble. We still haven't got any more matches from Backlash. So I can't update you on anything like that. But we'll run through the Raw to SmackDown um, drafts again, just in case you missed some. So Jeff Hardy, Absolution, Samoa Joe, Big Cass, Asuka, The Club, The Bar, Almas and R-Truth. And Sanity got called up minus Nikki Cross. Sanity got called up from NXT. But yeah, if you like that, please like, please subscribe. And listen to our podcast on s- s- Friday or Saturday. <laughs> I don't. I can't remember when it comes out. That's so bad of me. Um, I don't release it. That's why Chris does all the editing and releases the podcast. Uh, so it's when when he's ready to release it, it goes out. So yeah, the great advice on iTunes. But yeah, if you like that, please leave a like. Please subscribe. And I shall see you again. I might do one for NXT, one of these for NXT if anything interesting happens. So I might see you again tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye.